Okay, I'm in my shop today. Uh, I'll apologize ahead of time in case there's background noises that interfere. Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, Phragmites reed. <clears throat> now, I've talked about this before in other videos a little bit, and I do have some Phragmites in other videos that I've shown. Uh, but I want to dedicate this video specifically to Phragmites because it's difficult to identify and it's not as widespread as you might think if you look it up or Google it. Uh, they say that Phragmites is throughout the United States and you can find it next to waterways and, and that kind of thing, right? Well, the, in my experience, the type of Phragmites used for projectiles, arrows in, at lateral darts, is only found in very specific areas at high elevation and not next to water. Okay, so it's completely different. Now, there's, I looked up, I did Google a worldwide distribution map for Phragmites uh, based on DNA testing, and the map looks like this. Okay, that gives you an idea of the distribution. Now, Phragmites will vary between usable and non usable. Okay, and the coloration also changes. And some of the Phragmites, I believe, is actually cultivated uh, for other uses besides arrows, right? It can be used for thatching or it can be used for basketry. So the, the varieties not only naturally vary, but man-made variants are also possible or influenced by man, I should say. Okay. Um, so even if I show you some Phragmites, uh, it may not correspond to what you have, even though it's DNA identical, all right? Uh, the kind that I have found that is used or was used for arrows that I've seen in museums and photographs is uh, from the southwest of the United States. <clears throat> A lot of artifacts like arrows are preserved in dry caves and it's this type of Phragmites here that I have harvested locally because I can get it locally. Now worldwide it has been used for projectiles so you'll have to check the individual museums where you're at and see if you can find a plant that matches, right? Even a close match is fine if you want to reproduce these type of arrows. Okay, but I'm going to focus mainly on the United States although they say that Phragmites is also found in northern Mexico. I did a little map with some colors to show you um, the difference. There's kind of a different... Um, there's a difference between giant cane and Phragmites or giant reed. Donax, Arundo Donax is the giant variety. Phragmites australis americanus is what I have here, okay? They are different species, but they both can be used for arrows and at lateral darts. And I've got them on the map, shaded on the map. Okay, so here we go. This red area is what is where I can vouch for Phragmites actually existing in the United States. And it's mainly along highways, because that's where I've traveled. I can vouch for it along highways. But I've extended the range a little bit because they say on the world map that it will exist in those areas. So I included them. Okay, that's the red. Okay, the green is the giant reed. Okay, that I can vouch for. So these solid colors are the areas where I can personally vouch for that type of reed existing. Okay, the, uh, the other areas where the hatch marks and the shading are taken from the world distribution map. Okay, so in theory, you should be able to find Phragmites in this area, California, Oregon, and Washington State, okay, and into Mexico and down into the southern area of Mexico and into the Yucatan, okay. Now, I can't really vouch for anywhere in Mexico except the Yucatan. I did see some reed, but I can't vouch for it being Phragmites. It may just be the, the weak normal reed that you find, okay, but the type that can be used for projectiles, arrows in, atlatl darts, are in this area here, 
okay? This is Phragmites. This is giant reed or giant cane. Now, uh, I've heard stories of it, of the giant reed or giant cane existing all the way into Florida and up along the coast, of, up along the east coast and into the mountains, Appalachian Mountains, but I didn't include that on the map here, just a little bit in all of Florida. So I have gone into Florida, I did see cane in those areas, but I can't vouch for it to be exactly the type that's in this shaded area that's usable. Okay. I have harvested reed here. I use reed and cane interchangeably because you'll find it used interchangeably on the internet too. But anyway, I found reed here in South Texas and where I live here in West Texas to be very similar once you cut the right size diameter, as similar as far as spine weight, okay? And uh, I have traveled through here and I can vouch for this area too. But every other area that you see, I can't vouch for, but it, they say it on the internet that it does exist there. Okay. Now, I'll just show you a sample if this shows up. This is Phragmites reed. And the walls are fairly thick. Okay. The thick end ranges for arrows from 3 eighths to 7 sixteenths for poundages between 45 and 50 pounds, or let's say 40 to 50 pounds of spine weight at a 24 inch span. Let's see, I've got some of these marked. Uh, actually, this is the thick end here. Okay, so these range from between 3 eighths to 7 sixteenths in diameter at the thick end. And uh, like this one here. Forty pounds at twenty-six inch span. This one is forty-three at twenty-six inch. I think I said twenty-four inch. Anyway, uh, if your spine weights do not match this, then you don't have Phragmites at this particular diameter. Three eighths. Most of these are around three eighths. Some are a little bit less. Some are a little bit more. Okay, at this is this end here. Now, if you have a river cane, it's going to be a lot stronger spine than this okay so uh, I think that's about it I do have some more videos coming up where I'm going to show you how to make darts out of Phragmites reed that are much thicker than this stuff okay that, that's coming up pretty soon um, the thing that's holding me up with the, the large darts is I want to film uh, making a dart okay so it's taking me a while to get set up to do that because it's going to take me some time. Okay, so, or I'm going to make more than one dart on video, hopefully. Okay, so uh, I think that's it for this. If you have questions, if you have more questions on Phragmites reed, uh, it is a natural occurring species in the United States. It is native to the U.S., and especially in those areas that I showed you in the Southwest, it's been here for, you know, at least 2,000 years, maybe, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, but uh, we have artifacts going back 2,000 years that are made from this stuff uh, it, that uh, can be proven scientifically that it is this type of native reed that we have here in the U.S. Now we've been inundated with a common reed from Europe uh, that was brought over, I assume, for thatching, for thatching roofs, and it's spread everywhere. Uh, and that does exist near waterways, okay? But the Phragmites reed that I'm talking about exists in elevations of 2,000 feet or above. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. What I've seen personally, you have to get above 2,000 feet in order to get the thick wall stuff, okay? Now down in Mexico, I think, there are some pockets of Phragmites down in here and in the Yucatan that uh, may be cultivars taken from the southwest or northern Mexico and brought down and 
naturalized to those areas. That's just the theory that I have. But uh, I've been all over the, the U.S. looking for cane and reed, and Phragmites only exist in a small area. Okay. Uh, so again, if you have questions on it, uh, I don't know exactly where the stands are as far as along the highways and stuff. I can kind of tell you where to find some in different cities, but I, I don't have that much written down for sure where I saw it. I'm just driving along and I'll, I'll notice some read and I'll remember, I'll keep it in memory along the highways. And I think it's distributed in that way. Uh, so that's the easiest place to find it is drive along the major highways in the areas that I showed you. And you can see stands of read on the side of the highways. And in some cases, the area is not, you know, beyond the barbed wire or beyond the fencing or on private property. It's in the it's in the uh, the right of way or the shoulder of the highway. You can go in and harvest some. Okay, all right.